Hi, this is the Jared Wilkert. We're going to be covering the easiest possible way to get started with SAS. We're going to go over the prerequisites you're going to need, uh, how to set up your projects, how to organize your site, um, debugging whenever you have errors in SAS, uh, how to set up Sublime Text, take advantage of SAS, which will be at the very end. So if you don't have Sublime Text, you need to watch that part. Um, but let's get started first. So if you're like myself, a front-end developer who does mainly CSS and HTML, some JavaScript, jQuery stuff, uh, SAS seems very appealing to you. It's got a lot of great features. Unfortunately, you have to know a lot of stuff that's server side that's really complicated and you have to learn how to use the terminal and all sorts of stuff that is really complicated and, and doesn't need to be for using SAS. You know, for something that's meant for the front end person, uh, it's got a lot of stuff that you have to learn about the back end. But fortunately, there is a super, super easy way of doing this where you don't have to learn any of that junk. So that's what we're going to be going over today. First things first, you need to go to, uh, you you'll need to get Java. Just go to java.com. Uh, download Java, get the latest version of that, and then go to git.adobe.com slash air, get the latest version of air. Once those are running, then you need to get the latest version of Scout, which uh, runs inside of Adobe Air. Uh, this is at mhs.github.io slash scout dash app. Go to that. There's a link in the description as well. Once you have that up and running, we'll go ahead and pop it up here real quick so you can see what it looks like. It looks very blank, like maybe it didn't load all the way. Maybe this isn't done. No, this is it. It's very, very basic and simple. That's what we're going for here. Super duper simple. Uh, we'll go into this in just a second. I'll minimize this for now. This is the website we're going to be using. It's a very basic boilerplate website. It's got some, uh, you know, index file here, your assets, images, scripts, styles, documents, your, your standard stuff, you know, kind of a blank website. Um, what we're going to be looking at here is the style folder. And then here we've got a couple of style sheets. Now, there's two main ways I've seen people organize their CSS. One is to do it this way, where you have a bunch of different files. Each one is a separate task of what that file CSS is used for in the website. So you have one that's for normalizing your CSS, one that's uh, for cross-browser support, one's for media queries, and so on. Uh, maybe something, uh, you'll have each of your vendors for your, your plugins is a separate one. And that's a great way of doing it. Keep your stuff organized. If other people are going to work on a project, it's easier for them to find stuff and know what affects what on the website. It's a great way of working. Unfortunately, uh, there is a downside to that, which is that you have to link to a bunch of different CSS documents at the top of, in the head of your, your HTML documents. Uh, you also have a lot more um, requests that are being sent to your server. So the more requests that are sent, the slower page loads are. It takes longer because you can usually only do a couple of requests at a time for a server. So you're waiting for all of these requests to get processed by the server to download all these things. So slow slows down your page time, it can increase your bandwidth, uh, so that's the downside to this. The other way is to ignore organization, throw everything into one big file, and have uh, all your stuff sorted out in it, and maybe have some comments and a bunch of returns to space out each one. So it is organized and shows you know, one big document that has a section for cross browsing and a section for media queries, and a section for normalize, and you know, separate them out, and then maybe compress them at the end, make it all squish down, remove all the unnecessary semicolons and extra spaces and returns. Now, that's really great too. Unfortunately, you kind of lose a little bit of the organization side and it's a little bit harder to update things if you have a really big site and you have a lot of CSS. So, uh, what's amazing about SAS is that you get the best of both worlds. And this is how we're going to set up our project here. So, I'm going to rename this from underscore style and just, I'm going to rename it to underscore SAS. So I have all of my SAS files inside of one document, except they're still CSS. So we're going to go ahead and rename all these. I'm just going to use a program called Rename It because it's a lot quicker than doing them manually. All right, and I'm going to uh, just find and replace here. Let's look for everything that says .css and replace with .scss, which stands for Sassy CSS. Um, there's also a .sass, but we're going to stick with this guy for now, and I'll explain why later. So hit OK there. Now, another thing that I can do, besides just renaming them to have .scss, so they're the right format for SAS, instead of doing that, I can also do a, put an underscore in front of all these files. So I'm going to do that too real quick. Search and replace. There we go. So everything's got an underscore in front of it as well. So I'm going to rename this. Now what that does is it means that whenever Scout is monitoring this folder, any one of these, any file that has a .scss in the input folder will be converted to a .css file in the output folder. So let's go ahead and pull this guy up and 
set it up. Set up our new project. I'm going to point to my desktop, my site, hit select. It's right there on the desktop. Here it is, the input folder. That is going to be underscore SAS. Now I don't have an output folder yet, so let me make one. I'll put underscore style. All right, so this is going to be our new folder. And that's right now it's blank, but we're going to go ahead and come in here, choose the output folder underscore style. There we go, and then JavaScript folder scripts. I don't think it actually needs the scripts or the images folder, but you know what? Give it to it anyways. Make Scout nice and happy. There's also a config file. Now, if you're familiar with Ruby, and uh, you can actually make a text file that has all of these settings in it, and you can just use that one thing. But why would you do that when it takes four clicks, right? So there it is. Just select them there. It's a lot easier than using a config file. Um, that's what we're all about here, making it easy. At the very bottom here, we've got some options for the outputted files and how they are processed, and we'll go into that in a second as well. So back here in the SAS folder, um, as mentioned before, if, if there is a .scss file in the input folder, underscore SAS, then they will be converted to a .css file in the underscore style section. So to prevent that, you put an underscore in front of it. So if there's an underscore, it'll skip it, and it, it won't do that one. So right now they're all going to be skipped, which is kind of useless, right? Well, if we rename this guy right here, which I've already set up, rename that to not have it, this will be the only one that gets converted. So why am I doing just this one and ignoring all the rest? Well, this is where it gets pretty awesome. I go and open up Sublime Text. You can see this. Go into our SAS folder and Style. So what this is doing is it's saying import in these all of these other SAS files here. So this one here, underscore var, is right there. And then it tells me what that does. It has a little comment afterwards. This next one says import this other one and so on. So it imports all of our other SAS files. Now, this doesn't just generate. I wrote all this. But just, just for the sake of time, I'm, I'm just showing you what it looks like after I've written it up. So this is showing the order that I want them to be imported in. And then the little Scout app here is going to run. It's going to detect that this is the only one in there. And then it's going to go through and pull all of these out and put them into the new file in the underscore style section called style.css. And it's going to put all of these files, the contents of them, into this file in the order that they're imported here. And it's going to process them all so that they're converted into standard CSS that will be readable by any browser. Uh, and then it will compress them down using this output method. So you've got two different environments, development and production. Uh, you should pretty much always be in production. Development's not really that useful, but uh, play around with it. You'll figure it out. Uh, then we have the output styles here, and the stuff at the top is the most returns, the most spaces, uh, you know, it, really easy to read. As you go down, it gets more and more compact, and you get to the very bottom where it's super compressed, everything's on one line, all the extra spaces are removed, the uh, the trailing, the final semicolon at the end of your your classes are are, are removed, it's, all, it's super compressed. So that one right there is typically what you want, so it would be the smallest file size. Um, unless you really need to be able to see something on a specific line in here and know whenever you're doing um, debugging inside your developer tools in your browser, um, then you can set it to something else. But typically you want to set it compressed because it's, you know, you know that's that's the outputted file that you're really not going to be acknowledging much. You're going to mainly be focusing on this stuff up here. We've got our project all set up. It's right there. Let's go ahead and hit run. Hit this little button right here. Now you'll notice it's probably going to take you about 10 seconds. What this is doing is it's running a Java virtual machine. So if you get an error in here that says something about Java VM, uh, you need to update Java. So download the latest version of Java, update it. Um, and then after uh, Java Virtual Machine is, is booted up and running, it's going to load up a Ruby server on top of that with all of the Compass stuff already installed. And it's going to run it, and it's going to start um, pulling and, and checking for changes in the input folder. So that's what it did. So it started up, it ran, it said it changed detected in this folder. It saw that the output here and the style, the style that CSS did not match, what this compiles to. Now this just generated a .sas-cache folder right here. So this goes through and processes all of this stuff, throws it in this cache folder, and then compares it against what was in here. And right now there wasn't anything in there, so it saw there was a difference. One was a file and one didn't exist, so it went ahead and moved it over here. So that's what it said. Uh, it created the new document. Um, then there's this little message. Every time you start up the thing, this should pop up and say, Dear developers, blah, blah, blah. If you know what FSSM is, go ahead and read this. Otherwise, just ignore it. Hit clear. 
There you go. So I cleared out the log. Now it's blank and it's just sitting there and waiting for any changes to happen, which is super great, right? Because if you're going to be compressing all this stuff down uh, manually, you know, you have to constantly be vigilant about doing that. Whereas this just does it for it as part of the process. This is part of it. So if we dive into something like uh, the main document here, and we'll scroll through some of this, uh, you'll see that you know you can do nesting in here. There's variables and stuff you can do, and so on. You know, you'll learn all about that if you play around with, with SAS. It's super useful stuff. But um, in this document, we're just going to go through and screw something up to see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and remove um, this guy right here. It has a trailing bracket, so I'm just going to remove that, and then hit save. And we'll come back over here and we'll see it change detected. Holy smokes, what is all this? Oh no, there's so much text. It looks terrible. Oh no, no. What do you do? This is all you got to do. Read the very top. And after that, you can ignore the rest. It's saying it's saying change detected in the main SAS file right there. That's when we edited it. So then it said, since there was a change, we got to recompile this whole folder. And it sees the only thing that can process is this guy right here. So it says, error processing this guy on line 644 of... And then it shows you the file. So on 644 of the main document, that's where it had an error. And it even tells you invalid CSS after this little ending bracket, where it expected to have an ending bracket, there was nothing. So it's saying on in the this file here, on this line, we wanted to have a bracket, and there wasn't one. So it's straight up telling you what the issue is. After that is a bunch of nonsense. You can literally ignore all of it. All of this stuff, just ignore it. It, it's it's all nonsense, so it's not going to give you any help. But right here, this is all you need to learn. Just right here, this couple lines right here, super duper simple. So line 644 of that. Let's go over here, line 644 right here. So it got to the very end of the document, and it counted all of these in brackets that said I'm missing one. Now sometimes it's not very useful. Like right here, it just says go to the end when the actual thing it's missing is right here. Uh, other times uh, you'll delete something. Say, uh, I'll give you a better example here. Let's go ahead and fix this real quick. Put a little bracket, move it back into place, and we'll go ahead and hit save. And we'll go over to, say, uh, the media queries. Here we go. So we'll say we've got something down here, and we go into a section like this, and we'll delete something here. Um, Instead of going to the very end of the file, it'll actually follow up until the end of this section here. So it goes all the way down to here, and it'll probably say error on line 324. So that's saying that it's from here and above. The issue occurs somewhere above, and it's probably inside this section here uh, from whatever the start of this bracket is to the end here. So all the way back up, uh, that's probably where the issue occurred. So I'm going to undo that in this case. But just, just a heads up, whenever you see this crazy stuff, don't freak out. Just clear it out and go find the bug you made uh, and clear it out. So uh, before I mention that there's two different file types for SAS, we've got .scss and .sass. And the main difference is the formatting. So with this, as you saw, it's really easy. You accidentally, if you don't, if you don't, tab these all out correctly and really keep track of these ending brackets, it's easy to forget one and then you get an error and you have to go and track down where you, you mistyped something. So uh, there's a, that's with .scss. There's another one called .sass and that one is a little bit easier to work in but it's a little bit more advanced. So this section here wouldn't have that and that. It also wouldn't have this and this. It also wouldn't have this and this. It doesn't have these either at the end. There's no semicolons. So you're seeing that you're using less code, and everything is based on the indentation of your file. And this right here is kind of how you'd set up some sass.sass. So it's a little bit more advanced. You've really got to get your, um, your indentations correct. And you can't have in, uh, any of these extra brackets or semicolons. Uh, but this is what SAS looks like. Um, the downside to this is that you can't just copy and paste some CSS in from another document into here and work. You have to go through and format it the way I just did. Um, you also can't just rename a .css document over to .sass because it's not a, a SAS document. It's not formatted right. You can rename all of your CSS documents to SCSS. And those will work. Those will be processed by Scout, no problem. 
So that's really great about SCSS, and that's really where you should start learning. And if you want to go this more advanced route, after you kind of get used to it, you can do that. But it is a little bit more advanced, but it does save you time. You're typing less code, uh, and you're less likely to make these kind of mistakes here where you leave off one of these brackets somewhere. But, you know, learn this way first because it's much closer to CSS, and it also allows you to just, just rename your documents to SCSS if they're already a CSS document, and that's all you got to do. So uh, that's something to be aware of, two different routes to go. So really just do this stuff first, and if you kind of like this route, then maybe learn this stuff too. Um, we're going to go ahead and undo all that nonsense. There we go. Okay, so let's look at this outputted file here. So here's the style, that CSS that came out. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on word wrapping in here. You'll see there it all is. Uh, you'll notice that this guy, this comment, stayed in here. Now, why? Why, if it's going to delete all this stuff, why is that comment still in there? Well, if we go to the normalize page, we'll see that this comment that shows up has an exclamation point at the beginning, which means this is important and to make sure that you keep this comment. The rest of these comments got removed. Uh, Multi-line comments, single-line comments, they all get removed unless you have this right here in front of it. So if you want to keep something in there like this license, which is important for normalize, then you got to make sure there's this little exclamation point. So let's go back to this style.css file. So we'll go and turn the word wrap back on. There we go. And we'll see it's all crushed down. It's really small. You know, it's squished all of our stuff in. It's gotten rid of the unnecessary spaces. Uh, it's gotten rid of all of the unnecessary semicolons, all the returns. So it's all one line. It's super compact. Uh, let's compare here. So we'll go in here and select all these guys. We're looking at about 60.3K. We go over to, oops, go over to the styles folder here. And this one is about 42.5, so a decent reduction there. So that is a little bit smaller. You're only linking to one file in all your documents, so it's a lot simpler. You're only making one request to your server, so it loads quicker. Uh, it's it's all, to, all together a great way of working. Plus, you get to take advantage of the awesomeness of SAS, which lets you do uh, variables and mix-ins and, and all that stuff. So... Uh, super, super great setup here. As you saw, super, super easy. You install Java and Air, which you probably already have. Then you download Scout, which runs inside of Air. Uh, you set up a really basic project here. Super simple. You, you know, an input and output folder is all you really need. Choose your settings for how to output it, and then hit Run, and that's it. And then it's running. You rename your documents to CSS, to from CSS to .scss. And then it outputs it. That's it. That's all you got to do. Maybe make this little style thing right here, like a main one that imports the rest of them. So you have one output. That's why I highly recommend going that route. Uh, and you're good, man. Your site's super easy to maintain. Everything's organized. You get all the advantages of doing variables and such. Now, you may have noticed, uh, let's look at this one. Uh, all my code is white. I'm going through here. This is this, the part of the thing that's just for Sublime Text users. So uh, if you don't use Sublime Text, you can ignore this. Um, but you, you'll notice if we go under Syntax here, View, Change Syntax to CSS. So it kind of works, but some things are still white, like this guy here and this one and this stuff down here is white. Um, and so it's not quite there. It's close, but we want it to be really good. So to do that, it's actually pretty simple. Um, first things first, this is, the, this is the way I always do it. Uh, go and look up Sublime Text SAS. So this is the one here, how to add SAS support in Sublime Text. It's going to take you here, and there is a link right here to Package Control Site. So go to that, and then you copy in. If you're in Sublime Text 2, go to there. Sublime Text 3, go here. Copy in this little Python code. Copy. And then go over here and hit Control and Tilde. Um, which is the one next to the number one key, the little tilde, squiggly line, and then paste that in and hit enter. And that's going to add it in, reloading plugin package, control package, blah, 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 so it's going to add it in there. All right, so there it is. So hit escape to get rid of your, your little menu down here, and then go up to package control, I believe, under preferences. There it is. And we're going to hit install package and type in SAS. Just like that, hit install. You'll notice down here in the bottom section, it's installing the package. So it's going to download the package automatically. It's going to install it for you. And then it's installed. And voila. Now all we have to do is close out of these guys. 
Nope. And we'll just open them again, and it should automatically show you. There it is. The colors have changed. This was all white before, and now it knows how to read it in SAS. We go over here to this, what we were looking at a moment ago. We'll see that all of this stuff has been updated, so we don't have this random white right here or right there or right there. So there you go. That's it. Now, that that's all you got to do for Sublime Text to understand SAS and be able to see the colors properly. Uh, that is your basic intro to SAS. Um, download Scout app. Uh, make sure you've got Java and Air installed. Set up your project. Organize your site how you like. Uh, and start using it. Um, learn all the cool stuff you can. And that's pretty much it. So let me go ahead and close all this stuff. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, leave them below. Uh, I'll try to answer anything I can. Um, check out the description of this video for links to resources on learning SAS and uh, all that nonsense. Uh, let me know what you guys think.